Hi, this is the first video of chapter 3, the monopoly. In this video we are going to talk about the monopoly's decision and for this purpose we are going to define what is a monopoly and which are the differences with the previous type of market, which was the perfect competitive market. Okay, so just to begin, a monopoly is basically a market with only one seller, which is the opposite to a monopsony. A market with only one consumer. Consequently, in a monopoly, the only seller is going to have the market power, whilst in the monopsony, the consumer is the one who has the market power. But what is the market power? Well, the market power is defined as the ability to affect the price of a good or service. Does it mean that the monopolist can set any price? No, they have market power, but they cannot set any price. But we'll go back to this decision afterwards. So first we are going to compare a monopoly with a situation of perfect competition. And we find that in perfect competition, both the consumers and the producers are price takers. And this is going to occur because there are many consumers and producers in the market. So none of them is going to have market power. In the monopoly, the firm is going to be a price setter, although it will have some restrictions, as we have said. Second, we see that the product in perfect competition is an homogeneous product. This means that all the producers are going to sell exactly the same product. So there is no differentiation between them. Whilst in a monopoly, there will be some differentiation. The product is going to be heterogeneous. So the monopolist is going to be the only seller of this product. Third, in perfect competition, there are no entry or exit barriers, whilst in the monopoly, there will be some exit or entry barriers. And this could be one of the reasons for having a monopoly instead of perfect competition. If there are some entry barriers, maybe this is the, reasons, the reason for other companies not to be able to enter the market. Um, so it hinder other companies to enter. Fourth, there is one common characteristic in both markets, which is the perfect information. And this is the last one we're going to start. So here in this slide, we can see on the left the individual demand faced by a competitive firm perfect competition. If you remember, in the last chapter we saw that this was an horizontal curve, an horizontal line that coincided with the price. So the demand equals the price, equal to the average revenue, to the um, average uh, revenue and to the marginal revenue as well in the market. And the graph on the right is going to show the individual demand faced by a monopoly, which has the downward sloping, and this means that when the price increases, the quantity is going to decrease. Okay, so if the price goes up, the quantity demanded will go down. Why? Because this is related with the demand low. Okay, if the price increases, the quantity demanded decreases. So how can we maximize profits if we are in a monopoly, if I am a monopolist? Well, the first order condition is that the marginal revenue has to be equal to the marginal cost. This is the same as we had in perfect competition. Because when we maximize profits, we just compute the derivative of the profits and equal to zero. And this is the same as saying that the marginal revenue minus the marginal cost has to be equal to zero 
or that the marginal revenue has to equal to the marginal cost. This is what we have here. So, uh, what is the market demand curve in the monopoly? Well, the monopolist average revenue, the price it receives per unit sold, is just the market demand curve. So let's consider a firm whose demand curve is going to be P equal to 6, mi 6 minus Q, as in this table that we have here. This table is from the Pindic book. So this table is showing the total revenue that we have here. This is the price, the quantity, the total revenue in the third column, and the marginal revenue and average revenue, which are computed from the previous from the previous column. Okay. So we can note that the revenue is going to be zero when the price is six. Why? Because we sell zero units when the price exists. However, when the price decreases to five, the monopolist is going to be able to sell one unit of product. So consequently, the total revenue will be price multiplied by quantity, 5 multiplied by 1, the total revenue will be 5. If we increase the quantity from 1 to 2, quantity from 1 to 2, the revenue is going to increase to 8, because then the price will be 4 multiplied by 2, the total revenue is 8. So that the marginal revenue here is going to increase by 3 dollars in this case okay so the marginal revenue when we produce only one unit will be five because it goes from zero to five the total revenue so the marginal revenue is five when we produce one unit more we go from one unit to two units the marginal revenue will be three okay when we go from eight uh, sorry from two two units of product to three the marginal revenue again decreases because the total revenue goes from 8 to 9 so the marginal revenue will be only 1 um, and how can we compute the average revenue the average revenue is computed by dividing the total revenue by the number of units okay so it will be price multiplied by quantity this column total revenue and this column divided again by quantity so the average revenue is going to be equal to the price okay because price multiplied by quantity divided by price uh, sorry divided by quantity will be equal to the price price multiplied by quantity divided by quantity will be equal to the price okay so the average revenue is going to be equal to the price and as the price change we will have 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. So we can easily see that when the price decreases, the price decreases, the marginal revenue is going to be below the average revenue. Okay? So the price goes from 4 to 3, 2, and then 1. And if we compare average revenue and marginal revenue, we see that always the marginal revenue is below, is under the average revenue. Okay, this is 4, this is 3, this is 3, this is 1, this is 2, minus 1, one minus 3. Okay, so if we go to, um, to the next slide and we draw both the average revenue and the marginal revenue, we see that the marginal revenue is below, below the average revenue under okay how can we compute the average revenue as i said total revenue divided by quantity which is the same than dividing price multiplied by q divided by quantity okay so this the quantity goes out and this will be equal to the price and as the price i have said this is the demand curve or the inverse of the demand curve the price is equal to 6 minus Q because this is going to be given in the exercise. Well, well, this, the average revenue then will equal again to the inverse of the demand curve. Okay? So, just to sum up, 
the profits are maximized when the marginal revenue equals to the marginal cost and this happens when the monopolist produces exactly Q star, okay? So this is the marginal cost, this is the marginal revenue, and this is the first order condition that has to be satisfied that the marginal cost equals to the marginal revenue. And this happens when we have, uh, when we produce Q star. Uh, what happened with the price? Well, the price here is not set by the market. This is given by the average revenue. So if we draw a line, a vertical line from this Q that is produced in equilibrium, and we draw a vertical line that goes up to the average revenue, we will find the price in equilibrium. This will be the price because we said in the Past slide in the last slide that the average revenue was going to be equal to the price and that's why we have to look for the price here okay so what happens if the firm decides to produce a smaller output than this one than the one that we have in equilibrium imagine that the firm decides to produce q1 instead of q star so what is going to happen that the marginal cost is going to be under or below the marginal revenue at this quantity. So all this area that is between both of them will be a loss in marginal profits. Okay, so this will be marginal profits that this firm could gain if it will produce in Q star. And in the opposite case, if the firm decides to produce one unit more, to produce in Q2 instead of Q star, again, the marginal cost is not going to be equal to the marginal revenue, but above the marginal revenue. So this area is going to uh, stand for the marginal profits that the company is losing if it produces in Q2. Okay. So what more? How can we know if there are profits or not for the monopolist? Well, in this slide, the profit maximizing output is Q star equal to 10. Okay, so the quantity produced is 10. And at this quantity, the point where the marginal revenue equals to the marginal cost here, but if I draw a vertical line, I know that the price here is going to be 30, 30 euros, 30 dollars, whatever. Are there any profits? Yes, there are profits because there is a difference between the, between the average revenue and the average cost. So as the average revenue is above the average cost, we will have positive profits and the profits will be exactly this area. This 15 is the average total cost and the 30 is the average revenue. Okay, so this difference between them multiplied by the quantity which is 10 will equal to this area which is which are the profits. And this is all for this video. See you in the next one.